tonight on our news, the Prime Minister in New York on a mission to hold industrialized countries accountable on climate change. More from a Bloomberg interview where Davis talks closing the climate finance gap. Also, a first-hand look at the effects of climate change on Meguano following the passage of Hurricane Fiona. Plus, mass on or mass off. The public reacts to the lifting of a years-long mass mandate and later, Bahamian excellence on display. Meet the Bahamian producer who landed the theme song of a Tyler Perry Studios production. Welcome to our news and thank you for joining us. I'm Natalia Hall. Prime Minister Philip Davis is in New York discussing efforts to close the country's climate finance gap. During an interview with Bloomberg News, the nation's leader insisting the majority of the country's debt comes from tackling damage caused by acts of nature, especially when it comes to increasingly destructive hurricanes. The Prime Minister, who is in New York, says tackling this debt will take a twofold approach, the first involving industrialized countries taking accountability for their part in climate change. The other means, of course, is uh, engaging the Article 6 um, provision of the Paris Agreement, which allows for a voluntary carbon market. And so for myself, I'm not waiting for the international community. I am looking at ways and means myself to see how I can help myself. And what I've come to realize from the scientific studies that have been made known to me is that the Bahamas has one of the big, has one of the biggest carbon sink in the world, spread over 100,000 square miles. And so why don't I, why don't I identify my, my carbon assets, and monetize it and trade them? In explaining the country's financial position, Prime Minister Davis saying his administration took office at a time when the country's debt-to-GDP ratio was over 100 percent and says the debt profile shows that up to 40 percent or more of that debt is directly related to climate change. Davis telling Bloomberg that in less than a year, his administration has been able to bring that down to 82 percent with a 50 percent target by the end of this term. The Prime Minister adding that he's already introduced Introduce legislation to lay the foundation for monetizing carbon credits. We have identified a significant uh, um, carbon sink that is now should be before Vera for verification. Uh, once that's verified, we'll have them being we'll try and have a trade on the stock market. Once the word got out that we were pursuing um, monetizing uh, carbon credits. I had unsolicited um, offers just to buy it from, from numbers ranging from 50 million to 400 million. So for me to have had that, it tells me it's probably four times that. Officials spending hours on Meguana to assess the destruction following Hurricane Fiona. While the island sustained minimal damage, there is still more work to be done. Now our Bertany McDermott, who is back from Meguana, joins us now in studio. Bertany? Hurricane Fiona destroying the dock at Meguana, posing a serious problem for that island. And that's because the dock is the main mode of transport for goods and people. On the ground, acting Prime Minister Chester Cooper promising to address the issue. Hurricane Fiona destroying the dock at Meguana, posing a problem for the island. The dock is the main mode of transport for goods and people. Acting Prime Minister Chester Cooper promising to address the issue. The Ministry of Work senior engineer is here. Uh, he will take back the report, we will discuss it with the minister responsible, and we will do all that we can to restore it. When we arrived, seawater still covered the area where the dock once was. Family Island Affairs Minister Clay Sweeting stressing the importance of docks. Sweeting also says the government is looking at ways to better connect the islands. For a lot of family islands, this is something that people rely on um, for materials, for food, and other supplies. Passengers. And, and also for passenger vessels as well. Um, some use that as an experience. But here in, in Mayor Guana is one that we're assessing. We're assessing nationwide um, on how we can better connect our people. These comments came as the acting prime minister led a delegation to the southern island carrying boxes of supplies for the island. And according to Cooper, more are on the way. The delegation also visiting the water plant on the island, noting that a backup generator is needed. The island lost power and water Tuesday evening, 
but both were restored by 9 a.m. on Wednesday. If we have a situation where BPL is down, uh, if we have a backup facility, it doesn't mean that we have to lose our water supply as well. Before the storm, 10 people were evacuated from that island to Exuma and returned to the island with the delegation. Residents telling us they enjoy their time there. Wonderful experience. Wonderful. I can't describe it. And as the community begins rebuilding, the acting Prime Minister promising Mayaguana residents that they will not be forgotten. Italia. Thanks, Berthany. And we know the acting Prime Minister also telling Mayaguana residents that they can expect a new airport terminal in the future. I can say to the people of Mayaguana that we are going to be looking uh, very closely at building a, a small uh, terminal here, much like what we did in Ragged Island, uh, to ensure that they have the same level of, of comfort for air travel uh, as we have uh, in other family islands. So I think that's a model that we can, can duplicate. It was indeed distressing what we saw there, uh, and we're going to do something about it. Cooper, who is also the Minister of Investment, says the Davis administration believes Maguana can become a shipping hub and has received proposals to bring that shipping port to that island. One of the things we noted in our blueprint for change is that Meguana can be the shipping hub uh, for the south, southern Bahamas. Uh, we can take advantage of the deep water and the shipping lanes and the strategic location between uh, Europe and the rest of the Latin American uh, Caribbean region. And we do a lot of maritime logistics business in Grand Bahama. Uh, we can learn from what's being done there and certainly we can develop uh, around that shipping hub uh, here in Meguana. And while Hurricane Fiona may be out the way, there's more action in the Atlantic. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is in the Weather Center with our current conditions. Greg? Thanks, Italian. Welcome, everybody, for our first look at weather on this Thursday evening. Pretty nice outside our studios right now. Temperatures are in the low to mid-80s, 85 degrees with just a few clouds. Winds are now to the west-northwest at 8 miles per hour and your feels like temperature. Uh, still a little bit on the warm side at 92 degrees. Satellite view? Well, Fiona is moving away from us. We still have some weak, if you want to call it rain bands, cloud bands hanging out across portions of the southeast and central Bahamas, not really producing much in terms of any rainfall. We do have some low level moisture across the northwest Bahamas that triggered a few isolated showers. Temperatures managed to get into the 90s, and of course, lots of sunshine, clearing skies expected as Fiona continues to move away from our area. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come. When our news comes back, a man is killed in an early morning shooting. Find out the latest from investigators now on the hunt for a suspect. Plus, race for presidency. Members of the Bahamas Union of Teachers head to the polls in a vote for leadership. Also, mass on or mass off. Residents react to the lifting of a years-long mass mandate. And later, we'll introduce you to the Bahamian producer making waves on the world stage. It's all coming up when our news returns. Got wireless dead zones at your house? How about endless buffering? Will you put the Wi-Fi password again? This is Arrow. Arrow is not just a new Wi-Fi router. Rev customers get the first Wi-Fi system that covers every inch of your beautiful home. Improving home coverage, higher speeds, high performance, and connectivity for up to 75 simultaneous devices. Arrow. So why is you're streaming your favorite show on HBO Max? Arrow with Rev gives you the freedom to stay connected while you work, learn, and play at home. Never think about Wi-Fi again with Arrow from Rev. Visit rev.bs slash arrow or call 601-8992 to make your Wi-Fi wishes come true. Just one day after a man was fatally stabbed on Boyd Road, police were called to the scene of another murder. This time, a man was fatally shot on May's clothes off Hampshire Road today. Jamila Mizek reports. Oh, 
Police were alerted to the deadly incident around 7 a.m. Thursday morning. The incident happening just a few feet away from the Big Apple Preschool. Chief Superintendent Chrislyn Skippings addressing media on scene. Our preliminary investigations or information thus far reveals that a male had just left a residence here at May's Close when a van believed to be either white or gray in color approached the deceased. Police say a man wearing a short blue pants and a blue shirt exited the van, approached the victim and shot him multiple times. EMS pronounced him dead on the scene. According to police, the victim is believed to be in his early 40s and is not known to police. The mother of the victim was visibly distraught, but she and other family members on scene were not willing to speak, saying they too are seeking answers. They did identify him as Darren Gibson. Meanwhile, the number of homicides in the country inching closer to 100. Well, we remain resilient in our efforts in the fight against crime. And yes, we don't want to reach that 100 number. However, everybody plays a part in this fight against crime. Chief Superintendent Skipping's making this appeal to residents. That same weapon that your friend, cousin, brother, nephew may have, they may have it to harm someone else, but in reality, that same weapon can be used to take your life. And so it's important that you partner with your police department. Anyone with information about this latest incident is asked to contact Crime Stoppers at 328 Tips. Reporting for Our News, I'm Jamila Misek. Thanks, Jamila. Prosecutors have dropped their case against a jet ski operator accused of raping a Canadian tourist three years ago. 28-year-old Cleveland Musgrove was charged with rape after the woman claimed he offered her a ride while at Cabbage Beach on June 12, 2019. She alleged that Musgrove took her to Athol Island and raped her. However, the case ended without going to trial after the prosecution presented a Noli prosecute today. Two men are accused of burning down homes in Eleuthera in an attempt to cover up break-ins and thefts, facing charges of arson, housebreaking and stealing. Prosecutors allege that 30-year-old Benjamin Martin of Harbor Island and 22-year-old Carlos Wilson of Lower Bogue broke into Robert Bard's home at 10 Bay Luthra on August 29th and stole appliances and electronics. Following the theft, they are accused of burning down Bard's home, causing $850,000 in damage. On the same day, prosecutors say that Martin and Wilson broke into Adams Lab's home and stole a split air conditioning unit and a flat screen television before they allegedly burned the house to the ground. The men who appeared before Magistrate Carr Turnquest DeVoe were not required to enter pleas. They were denied bail and they are expected back in court on December 13. A child molester has been sentenced to time served for the three years, nine months and two days he has already spent in custody. 62-year-old Reginald Sweeting pleaded guilty to unlawful sexual intercourse in relation to the 12-year-old case. The plea spares his victim need to relieve, relive rather, the traumatic incident in court. On January 21, 2010, the then 10-year-old girl went to Sweeting's home to collect an item for her grandmother. The child met his door open and entered the home. Once inside, Sweeting grabbed the girl from behind, pushed her into a bedroom and raped her. The judge also ordered Sweeting to pay the victim $5,000 in compensation by December 5, 2022 to avoid serving a year in custody. Sweeting must be of good behavior for two years or else he will be liable to a sentence of one year in prison. Schools closed early today as hundreds of teachers headed to the polls to select top posts in the Bahamas Union of Teachers. Our Melina Leonard caught up with voters and candidates this morning for more. These ballot boxes will be full later in the afternoon as thousands of teachers across the Bahamas will be voting in the Bahamas Union of Teachers election of officers. Krishan Johnson, a music teacher at C.R. Walker Senior High School, tells us why she's casting her vote today. Well, I just want my voice to be heard. You know, people complain all the time, but if you don't vote, then your voice is not heard. We also caught up with some of today's candidates including current president Belinda Wilson, who said in an exclusive interview with On the Record last month that this run would be her last. We have three
3,000 members from Grand Bahama to Inagua, and my focus is going to be on those members. I'd just like to say really thank you um, to the thousands of members who and who've supported me for so many years. The longtime BUT president is being challenged by Dion Johnson, who tells us why he decided to run. I figured this was an opportunity to give members an option a choice so that they can understand that it's not really about the leadership, it's about the membership and its empowerment. And long-standing union member Jacqueline McKenzie is also running for the top post, says her priority will be transparency and member empowerment. I have decided to run for the presidency because as everyone knows, the BUT used to be the premier union in this country. We set the pace for the other unions to follow. And over the years, the standards have been dropping and falling where we are almost to the ground. So we need to do whatever it takes to bring our standards back up. Reporting for Our News, I'm Marlena Leonard. It's now time for tonight's Financial Market Minute, brought to you by RF, your local investment bank. This has been your Financial Market Minute. To explore the best performing mutual funds in the Bahamas, visit our website at www.rfgroup.com. When our news comes back from the Bray government's announcement that the existing mass mandate will be lifted, putting some residents on edge. Plus, Natalia, coming up in Sports for you tonight, we'll take a look at an exciting Game 5 in the Bahamas Government Departmental Basketball Association. One winner going to the championship round. We'll tell you all about that coming up in sports. Thanks, Marcellus. We'll have all the details when our news returns. Got wireless dead zones at your house? How about endless buffering? Will you put the Wi-Fi password again? This is Aero. Aero is not just a new Wi-Fi router. Rev customers get the first Wi-Fi system that covers every inch of your beautiful home. Improving home coverage, higher speeds, high performance, and connectivity for up to 75 simultaneous devices. Arrow. So why is your streaming your favorite show on HBO Max? Arrow with Rev gives you the freedom to stay connected while you work, learn, and play at home. Never think about Wi-Fi again with Arrow from Rev. Visit rev.bs slash arrow or call 601-8992 to make your Wi-Fi wishes come true. This is our news. Welcome back. One day after government announced its plans to relax the mask mandate, the public is reacting. RJ Milamizic has their comments in this report. It's official. Government announcing that on October 1st, the mask mandate will be lifted. However, masks will still be required in schools, healthcare facilities, and homes for the elderly. We took to the streets today to find out just how residents feel about the news. Glory, glory, hallelujah, Jesus. I've been vaccinated too long. I still have to be going around the place protecting myself from other people. I mean, I always felt like as an adult, you should take accountability and responsibility for your own actions. And so time to get back to normal, see some type of regular life. And it's very hot. And now we get to see if the girl's pretty. Um, I'm happy they're lifting it up because right now it don't make no sense we're using it seeing that everything's open. I really hate wearing the mask. Uh, it's about time because other countries already lifted it up. So I think it's about time we, we do the same. And I still feel like people should have common sense and use them when they feel applicable and best. Will you still be wearing yours? Well, if I'm in a crowded area, yes. Just as a precaution, you know, because, you know, it's still not 100% safe. 
Health Minister Dr. Michael Darville had previously said the Davis administration would lift the mask mandate by the end of the year once 70 percent of the population is vaccinated. Resident Frank Carter says he doesn't think that number has been met. I'm glad they've kept it in health care uh, centers as well as for places for the aged. And we still must be very careful and not throw caution to the wind. Now the government also noting that some Bahamians will still choose to wear their mask in crowded settings and that everyone's choices deserve respect. Reporting for Our News, I'm Jamila Mizek. Thanks for that report, Jamila, and the battle to go to the Government League Basketball Championships coming down to a deciding Game 5 at Kendall Isaacs Gym. All right, thanks, Natalia. Welcome to Our Sports, everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall. Well, last night over at the Kendall Isaacs Gymnasium, the action hot and furious as a deciding Game 5 to go to the Bahamas Government Departmental Basketball Association Championships taking place between the Panthers and the crime stoppers. There could only be one winner. Let's tell you who it was. Winner take all situation as the Bahamas Government Departmental Basketball Association semifinals continued last night at the Kendall Eyes Gymnasium. Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture Panthers going up against the Oak Tree Crime Stoppers in a game five when it would go to the championship. As it stands, this one back and forth throughout, right down to the final few minutes. That's when the Panthers able to pull away behind some great play from Kim to Silvestre. Uh, they get the win here 98 to 92. They win the series three games to two. Roosevelt Wiley, he led the way for the Panthers with 34 points. Kimsey Silvestri chipped in with 29. Eugene Bain, he led the Crime Stoppers with 22 points. Championship game comes your way uh, beginning on Friday. Meanwhile, though, hearing from both coaches after the contest. As we said, game one of the championships comes your way on Thursday night. That's tonight at the Kendall Eyes Gymnasium. They'll play Thursday, then Friday, then Saturday, all at 8 o'clock, again at Kendall Isaacs. And there it is. You look at sports here on this Thursday. I'm Marcellus Hall. Back to you, Italia. When our news comes back from the break, meteorologist Greg Thompson is back in the weather center, still tracking the tropics in your extended weather forecast. And later, how following his dreams leads one Bahamian producer to international success. Meet the man behind the theme song of a Tyler Perry Studios production when our news returns. Got wireless dead zones at your house? How about endless buffering? Will you put the Wi-Fi password again? This is Aero. Aero is not just a new Wi-Fi router. Rev customers get the first Wi-Fi system that covers every inch of your beautiful home. Improving home coverage, higher speeds, high performance, and connectivity for up to 75 simultaneous devices. Aero. So why is your streaming your favorite show on HBO Max? Air with Rev gives you the freedom to stay connected while you work, learn, and play at home. Never think about Wi-Fi again with Arrow from Rev. Visit rev.bs slash arrow or call 601-8992 to make your Wi-Fi wishes come true. a tropical storm and three disturbances. Things are sure heating up in the Atlantic this week. Now Greg is back in the Weather Center with your extended weather outlook. Greg. Thanks again, Italian. Welcome back, everybody, for our second look at weather. Of course, we're still tracking the tropics. Fiona is moving away from our area, and it is still leaving some swells behind, so that's going to be our main challenge for the balance of the week. But rainfall and moisture associated with that system continuing to pull away. It should be approaching the Bermuda area late tonight and into tomorrow, and it's likely that's going to pose some problems for them before it turns more towards the north and moves into the Canadian Maritimes 
There's also Gaston, which is still out there in the open Atlantic, not a threat to anybody. And we're watching two tropical waves, one in the Atlantic, uh, just midway between Africa and South America. Strong wave coming off of Africa as this, at this time as well. Both of these systems have a medium to high chance for formation. Should stay out in the open Atlantic, but we will continue to watch the south uh, portions of the Caribbean and near the Leeward Islands. National Hurricane Center giving this area a very high chance for formation over the next couple of days. We'll move into the Caribbean Sea and it is likely that this will become our next named storm. Some of the models now being put into play and this is, it's not formed yet. It's in best system right now but it's expected to continue to move towards the uh, west into the Caribbean and it is expected by late this weekend and into early next week, Sunday time frame Monday, it could possibly form into a category of uh, one hurricane and then eventually by the time it gets in the Gulf of Mexico could be a full-blown uh, major hurricane at category three. We will continue to watch this one as it continues to move towards the west and it's going to stay to the west of the Bahamas but we could possibly see some rain bands associated with that affect portions of the Bahamas by next week. Boating forecast for the northwest and central Bahamas. We're still asking you boaters to exercise caution for the swells. The winds are going to be out of the northwest and north at 10 to 15 knots. Seas running 2 to 4 feet, but they will be up to 7 feet in some swells. Your low tide will be at 12.51 in the morning. For the southeast Bahamas, caution flag down there for you as well. But easterly wind flow at 10 knots. They will fall light and variable. Seas 1 to 3 feet, but up to 6 feet in some northeasterly swells. Here's a look now at your national forecast. A look at your seven-day forecast. No real change into the weekend. There is a front we expect to get into South Florida by the end of the weekend and early next week. Should move into the Bahamas. So we're looking for some increasing showers and thunderstorm activity by Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday time frame. That's a look at our weather. Make it a safe Thursday evening, everybody. Thanks, Greg. A young Bahamian producer making a big mark on the international stage. Chavez Parker has landed the theme song to Tyler Perry's new show, Zatima, which will air tonight on BET+. The young producer spoke with me about his rise to success and is encouraging other Bahamians to always follow their dreams. That's a sample of the theme song created and produced by Parker for Tyler Perry's new show, Zatima. Parker says the Tima is a spin-off of Tyler Perry's show, Sisters. Zach and Fatima, um, and they are this you know, couple that fall in love, and I believe they're moving in together. So this whole show, uh, Zatima, uh, which is a com combination of the two names, is actually showing them moving in together and like starting life together, this new relationship, this new love. Parker, who was born and raised in Grand Bahama, has been playing the piano since the age of five. The young producer has traveled across the world, pursuing his music production dreams and education. He now works as a creative licensing manager for Blades Unlimited, one of the leading sync companies in the music industry. As a music producer, you know, your, your career is so up in the air. You know, you don't have, you really don't know when the next opportunity is going to come or what is going to come exactly. Um, so the support is really making me feel a strong sense of gratitude and I'm, I'm just really looking forward to continuously making you all proud, like continuously bringing um, more attention like this to the Bahamas. And when he got the call that his work was selected... That Tyler Perry was actually listening to my music, you know, um, because in the email, that's pretty much what they were waiting on. They were waiting on the okay from him. Now Bahamians can support Parker by tuning into the show on BET Plus tonight at 8. And he's encouraging other Bahamians in the music industry to not be discouraged. Like, I understand we're still young and we're still growing. Um, and there isn't a lot of opportunities music-wise back home. But because we live in the internet age, there's a lot of opportunities out there on the internet. I got this job over the internet, you know. I literally was working for them for like eight months before I actually met my boss in person. So... Um, <clears throat> I just feel like I just feel like we have to utilize the tools that we have. Great motivation, and thank you for joining us tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Natalia Hall. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. Have a beautiful evening, Bahamas.